So today I put a mandrel bent custom exhaust system on my truck for hopefully pretty cheap. Uh, so the center point of this thing is going to be a Summit Racing Universal X pipe. It's a two and a half inch mandrel bent unit you can buy from Summit. Just uh, you can kind of cut it up how you want it, weld it how you want it, and then put it in hopefully or theoretically pretty much any vehicle. We've got two Black Widow Venom 250 mufflers. Uh, these are three inch mufflers, supposed to be a two and a half inch muffler. I'm going to try to use them on a different project, so we'll do a little bit of extra work and try to make these things reusable instead of welding them into this project permanently. Uh, besides that, I bought some universal two and a half inch U-bins. There's a, I think this is like a six or eight inch bin radius. These are pretty large. And then I bought some tighter four inch bin radius tubes that are just a two and a half inch diameter. They just got a tighter mandrel bin to them. And then I'm going to try to stick all this underneath the truck and make some noise. So I find it works best to start with a plan when you do this. Kind of figure out where you want the exhaust to go. Do you want it to run above these cross members, down below the cross members, and then how do you want it to exit as well. You also get a look at which points you might use to hang the exhaust and things that the exhaust has to go around, things are going to get too hot, things you don't want the exhaust to swing or rattle against, that sort of thing. Uh, for, so for this truck, I kind of want to keep the drive shaft as the center point for the exhaust, so I'd like to hang the X pipe kind of up underneath the, uh, the front pinion yoke if I can here, or the front U joint if I can, and then bring the exhaust between the cab and the cross member here for the transmission, and then bring it on out. Let it go into an X, come out of an X, and then hang the mufflers directly behind that. Ideally what I'd like to do with this thing is have the exhaust turn out like just underneath the bed right in front of the rear tire here. Uh, so if it would kind of come out and, I don't know, come out in this fashion or back a little bit or maybe back underneath here slightly, something like that would be great. Um, that's kind of what I was looking for. It kind of tucks it up underneath here to keeps the exhaust pipe hidden. You don't see the exhaust like hanging down below the truck and flying down the road. It would hopefully keep it tucked up nice and underneath the bed here so all you see is like a, a small point coming out and that's it. Uh, I'm not going to go over the rear axle or anything. I try to dump it out the side, out the back. I think the midpoint in the bed right in front of the rear tire looks pretty cool and that way if you do any big fire you burn outs to it and always uh, blows that exhaust and tire smoke out the side. So. Anyway, I'll kind of mock this thing up and we'll try to somehow set it in place and go from there. These two uh, Hedman headers that I put on this truck, they, uh, they do a pretty good job of coming out here pretty evenly underneath the truck. Uh, the one on the passenger side does a real good job of coming pretty, pretty well straight back. The one on the driver's side, however, does kind of tilt out towards the driver's side some more, which I think actually might be kind of handy. It looks like it's going to try to give us some space to go out towards the, the exterior of the truck a little bit, maybe clear some of the shift linkage and stuff, and then turn it back in slightly and make a nice straight run towards that X-pipe. Uh, these are just the collectors that came, or the collector ends that came with the head and kit. They just bolt on and give you a little bit of, they give you a few degrees of movement here to kind of angle the thing around and still provide a seal it looks like. So I'm going to put these collector pieces on the end here. I'm going to leave these slightly loose so that I can move them around and kind of play with the X-pipe as I bring it up in here. That way I'm not committed to any sort of harsh angle or anything. So I'm going to set the X-pipe up like this to begin with. Now I'm going to make it wide in the front and narrow in the rear. By taking these joints out and flipping them over you can actually make it uh, narrow and narrow if you need to or any combination. Uh, to kind of fit whatever application you have. It looks like this is a big block V8. I'm assuming the width of the two manifolds or the width of the two headers. It's probably pretty standard. Um, so I'm going to leave this wide in the front and then narrow in the back and let the offset of the mufflers kind of make it wider as it goes back there. Okay, so I'm just going to set this X pipe in place. And try not to drop any of it here.
Okay, so looking from the back of the truck towards the front, the X pipe is sitting in place and it's just sitting on this, uh, this stand here. You can use a jack stand or whatever you want it to, use, some old boxes or something. And it looks like it's actually lining up pretty closely here as we get over the cross member and towards the, the collector. It's a tad wide, it looks like, which is probably fine. Uh, so to fix that, we would just cut some off of this joint here. And so the more you cut off of this pipe, the more it's going to slide in the side of the X pipe here. It would actually bring this pipe obviously back a little bit, but also more towards the center of this collector piece. And then same on the driver's side here. Looks like this uh, this pipe actually looks like it's going to work out pretty well. So I can show you guys how aligned that is. Um, oops. I dropped this thing on my head here. So it looks like as it comes through, we should have plenty of clearance here for uh, shift linkage and any sort of uh, clutch bar, all that sort of stuff should be just fine through here. So I think what I'll do at this point is uh, I'm put some marks on the cross member and put some marks on the pipes for where I want things to be. And then I'm going to start to shorten this passenger side X pipe over here. And make sure things nice and centered and try to get that lined up so it's a nice straight shot on that side. And then I'm going to have to make a little bit of an S, I guess, to kind of S that driver side pipe collector to the x-pipe and join that together. So I'm going to do this in the most scientific way possible. I'm just going to cut off a little bit and then see if it fits. Cut off a little more, see if it fits. Cut off a little more, we realize it's too much, and then try to weld some back on. Just fit that one. They're still kind of wide. Oh, they don't get in places. Here's the passenger side. So we've got a pretty straight shot here. To this uh, collector to the front of this X pipe piece here. I'll just get a measuring tape and I'll measure these off. Got a piece to fit in there and then tack weld it in. It's like just that six and a quarter will get us there. So I took one of those U-bins that I had and I cut off a piece that was about a sixteenth of an inch too long. And it looks like I can get a nice flush mount here on this collector. But then when I go to connect it to the actual X-pipe, there's a bit of a gap in it. Um, so the way to fix that is to use the belt grinder and take a little bit of material off of the far side. So I'm going to clock this thing. with a marker so we know that these two pieces of pipe are going to match back up in the same clocking orientation again. So in order to close the gap on this side, that means it's touching, the two pieces of pipe are touching on the back side. So to correct that, what I'm going to do here is, uh, this is the side that we're looking at here. I'm going to go to the opposite corner and I'm going to actually remove material off of this side with the grinder, hopefully in a straighter line than that. These belt grinders are super handy tools to have. You can buy like a small uh, bench size unit for I think a couple hundred bucks or a hundred bucks at Home Depot. This size unit even you can find on Craigslist garage sales for pretty inexpensive. People just don't use them anymore. But it gives you a nice flat surface to grind with. Okay, back together this goes. Again, our black mark. 
clock stuff, piece of pipe with the X pipe. And the end of this pipe's actually got a bend in it here, which I can take some pliers and straighten up in a minute, but right now we're not gonna worry about it. So it looks like it lines up a lot better and it gives me a nice weldable gap through there. So I'll take my uh, MIG and we'll just tack this thing up real quick. Okay, so that tacks one side together. You can see there's still enough clearance between the cross member and the pipe there. Um, I'm gonna have to clearance the cross member a tiny bit, but we'll see how it plays out once we get this thing finished. Uh, once this side goes up a little bit, that side over there may go up a tad more just for some clearance. Um, so I'm gonna start working on that front S bin there. And keep in mind, I wanna keep everything straight still. Everything still looks pretty centered here. Um, these pipes have got some movement to them, so I'm going to make sure that X-pipe stays nice and centered with that drive shaft. And the distance from drive shaft to pipe on both sides stays the same as well. As I knock things down. Okay, so here's the header collector on the driver's side. Here's the X-pipe coming in about where I want it. Um, so things i got to contend with here on this side are uh, the shift linkage. So I can kind of move this around and get some different views of it. So here's the shift linkage back here that goes uh, back and forward. So, oh, that's not the shift linkage I care about. This was the one I care about. Uh, so this one here swings in and out and potentially hit um, on this pipe here. I've got a pretty straight shot uh, this way. So if I brought it straight down and then turned it a little bit, I think I've got enough clearance with that shift linkage isn't, isn't going to be in the way or anything. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Um, so I cut up about a five and a quarter inch piece here. And so I'm trying to connect, the, kind of bridge the gap here between the flange and this uh, X-pipe. So if I just bring the X-pipe straight down, it doesn't give me quite where I'm going to go. It needs to kind of tilt in a little bit. And then same thing with the collector down here. Without really getting to the end of the uh, angle on this collector, you could really try to point it up some more, but I'm afraid I'm going to end up with some ceiling issues. So I'm trying to keep this angle as straight as I can to the header here. So I'll tilt it up just a couple degrees, but I don't want to go much past that. Um, I guess I can come back in a couple degrees as well. So what I'm going to do is kind of just hold this up here and kind of get a rough estimate of what that piece of uh, bend would look like and try to get an estimate on how big that gap is in there. So I have to kind of just imagine What's it look like? I'll say, okay, well, if I take a two inch U bin and one of those tight radius bins and lop it off, and I kind of make it bigger on one side and smaller on the other, I kind of need it to look about like this. So you can kind of measure this if you want to. Um, I find it best to just eyeball the thing and lop it off and then kind of grind it from there. So it looks like I've got about a I don't know, inch on one side, maybe an inch on the quarter on the outside, inch and a half on the outside. Uh, Alright, so it's a pipe cutting 101. I just use a bandsaw and I got this uh, swag off road table. You could do this with a hacksaw or anything really. Uh, the trick is to make a straight line and then be able to follow it. So to make this pipe straight, I just use a zip tie. And you don't crank it on here too tightly, but uh, the zip tie is nice because it gives you a good straight line all the way around the pipe and you can take it off and you can put it back on. So what I'm going to do is figure out how to go make that wedge out of this bend radius here. So um, the nice part is you can kind of move the zip tie where you want it to say let's make a line that looks like this or like that and then follow it around with a marker. Uh, so in order to try to save as much of this bend radius or be able to use as much as I can, I'm going to try to lop off this straight section here and say this part of the pipe is not bent, it's just a straight piece of pipe so we don't really care about it. Um, but we wanted something that was um, kind of wide on the top and more narrow at the bottom so I'm going to kind of bring this thing up on the inside and push it down on the outside 
And then I'm gonna take my marker and just trace around here. What it's gonna do is give me a, a line to follow when I cut it out on my saw. So then correspondingly, we can do this here. We can either uh, make the other side of the pie. We can make it a little more narrow. We don't need quite so much of a, of a bend in here. Or we can make it pretty steep and drastic. We really need like a huge steep sharp bend. And like the more you drag this out to the side, the more of a, a piece of a pie you're gonna end up with here. So if I cut, you know, if I cut a mark here, I end up with this pretty steep, pretty sharp bend. Uh, we didn't need anything quite that drastic from what, what I was just looking at. We wanted somewhere around an inch on the inside and probably an inch and a half on the outside. So we'll start with something that looks kind of like this and then we'll just sneak up on it. So what I'm going to do is uh, mark this piece with a marker. And we'll just cut those out on the bandsaw. All I've done there is follow a line and cut it. You could do that with a cutoff wheel, you could do it with a hacksaw, really anything. Uh, just find the bandsaw makes quick and dirty work of it. You know what I might actually do? Um, this piece here has got a slight bit of a bend to it. Uh, I might put this on the flange side of the collector and see if that doesn't kind of just, uh, you know, tilt that angle back up just a little bit, see if we can't work with this and find something useful there for it. And I'll put this one back up on top. So now you can really start to see how a piece of a uh, piece of bend like this, this is just a piece of pie that we cut out. It really starts to go together. So if I add it to a piece of straight tube, now I have my piece of straight tube will have a nice little bend to it. And then if I put another piece of straight tube on the opposite side of it, you can see where it now has a bend to it. So it didn't take much and we got a, a decent little offset there. Um, so as you start to stack these bends together, So now we got a custom bin there, and it's a nice mandrel bin once it's all folded together. Obviously there's no kinks in it, and so things will exhaust will obviously flow through here at the best rate possible. Uh, the next thing to do is start stacking your bins together. So here's the first bin we cut, we chopped off, and you can see where it starts to get even tighter. And then uh, if you want to like go around an obstacle or something, you can do this sort of thing where you start to stack. Uh, bends on top of bins and go around little pieces of linkage and that sort of stuff and have a nice nice tight radius on things So the other pie that we had before we cut out of the saw out there and I did is just sliced it right in half And now what I'm going to try to do to this side of the pie We'll turn the x-pipe back down and towards the header collector and this side of it will sit on the header collector and turn it back up towards the x-pipe and give me a nice straight shot so all I have to do is cut out a piece of straight metal straight pipe and stick it in that gap and I've got a completed circuit between my x-pipe and my header collector and I'm not hitting anything back here or good to go so I'm gonna tack these two pieces in place I'm gonna tack the pie here okay so that's tacked in place there uh, so here's the so call it the right pie and the left pie and then here's that center section that I cut out I just slid that in between there so a straight piece of pipe and I just tacked it in place in two places all I'll do is take this whole X pipe out of here and take the MIG and go around to final weld everything outside the truck that way I'm not trying to fight all these different angles and obstacles and all that sort of stuff all right so far things are looking real good uh, the X pipe is nice and straight the drive shaft where I wanted it and I've got a nice even gap between both the uh, left and right side of the cross member for how much clearance I got with that pipe. I hope that's enough clearance. If not I can take that rear cross member out and put a notch in it if I need to. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is just uh, make sure I got enough clearance in the drive shaft to make sure those U-joints aren't going to head up there. So I got plenty of clearance up there. Nothing to worry about. And uh, so the cool part about these universal X pipes here is 
We've got the uh, the pipes from the headers running kind of downhill, and then these pipes in the back, instead of them being fixed, we can just uh, we can rotate these up to have them be more uh, more in line with the frame or in line with the ground where we need them to kind of tuck the mufflers and everything back underneath the frame of the truck back in this section. So I get those mufflers set up and hang those in here. Okay, so I want to try to use these Black Widows on a different project. Uh, oops. So I got three inch Black Widow mufflers to go on to a two and a half inch exhaust system. So in order to make these things reusable, I went to an exhaust shop and I had them take a piece of two and a half inch and flare it out to three inch on the ends. And then I've cut these and then I welded these flares onto a piece of three inch uh, exhaust tubing which I plan to uh, take the muffler and then put a clamp on it and then put one of these in the end of here and then clamp that together and weld this into the system. Uh, that way I can take this out and not actually weld onto these, uh, these new mufflers that I want. Uh, long story short, don't do this. This, is, uh, this has been a lot of work and a lot of headache for really... Uh, Probably no benefit, but anyway, so when you see this under the truck, when I weld it all on in a minute here, you'll understand at least why I did it and, uh, and that you probably shouldn't do it. Well, it's going to be way too long. To make this work how I want it to, I have to take this X pipe and cut it, cut it up here, a lot closer to the X, just to get the uh, enough length to have these fittings on each end of the muffler, and the muffler end here, where I have enough room to turn this pipe out the side and come out in front of the tire there. So, yes, I'm gonna uh, put some marks on those pipes. I'll take them out. And I'll cut them. All right, here's the back shot of the muffler now. So when I level this thing out and get it to where it'll sit even with the X-pipe and the muffler sitting level, it's not tilted off this way or that way. It sits good and even and it's got enough clearance in the frame where that 90 degree turn can go out and go just underneath the bottom of the frame here. If anything, it might actually come down and have it turn down a little bit to go just underneath that frame and then a little turn in it to level it back out there. Um, I'll just keep that muffler tucked up underneath the frame just that much tighter. So I think I'm just going to tackle all these in place. I'll do the same thing on the opposite side and just watch my gap between the mufflers and the drive shaft makes everything make sure everything's good and clear and ready to go. And uh, I'll put a I'll have to put an exhaust uh, bracket hanger on here somewhere too to hang the back of this thing up. All right, time to start this turn out to the side from underneath the bottom of the truck. I'm just going to take one of these U-bins and cut it in half. That'll give me a bin for this side and a bin for the passenger side as well. See, this gets it close. Makes a nice uh, 90 at the side right there, but doesn't get the exhaust all the way out to the the outside of the bed here where I want it. So I have to figure out something else, but I think for now I'll tack this up and put an exhaust hanger on it. I bought these hangers off of Summit racing for, I don't know, five or six bucks. I think you just weld the top piece here to the frame and then you weld this strap to the side of the pipe and let it hang that way. So I'll figure out a place to put uh, one or two of these here, maybe to the bottom of the frame here even, or something. I ended up with a pretty big gap in it here. Uh, like on that side. I think I'm just going to take that and cut it loose and try to tack that again. So this is interesting. The uh, drive shaft and rear end is actually off-center. 
in this truck. I thought it was centered pretty well. Looks like the uh, the transmission is actually centered with the truck up towards the front, but as it goes back to the back, the pumpkin is off centered on that rear axle. So the clearance between the drive shaft and the frame on the driver's side is going to be greater between the frame the muffler and the drive shaft and the muffler versus the passenger side here which is going to be pretty tight so looks like probably not a huge issue this X pipe's got a piece in it that I can take out and oops I just set that there so I can take this small bend radius piece out of the X pipe and cut it inside of here so that the bend piece for the rear of the X pipe will actually slide inside of here some more. Right now it's got roughly a two inch gap so I need to figure out how to cut this thing, cut enough material off of this X pipe piece to get it to slide inbound a little more and line up with this. So I kept cutting this piece of this original X pipe kit here. You can see there's not much of it left. There's what's inside of here, and then there's this one little turn, and that's all. So remember before it went, uh, it came out of the X and went all the way back to this point and stopped back by the uh, the drive shaft at some point here, like kind of where the end of the muffler is now. And so I've cut it all the way back to being just this little stub, so it kind of turns out, makes the 45. And then it's tied into the muffler here. Uh, this muffler is just barely sitting here, kind of balanced. And so I'll get the welder out and I'll tack this in place in a second. But everything looks like it's going to be good, good with this. Uh, let's make it kind of a down low shot here. Everything looks nice and even and straight and square, despite it being slightly off center. So here's the pieces I have left over now that we're almost to the end. Uh, so I have a piece of the big radius, piece of the tight radius, and then looks like a, most of a piece of a tight radius as well. So take note of this. If uh, you're doing this project yourself, this might be pieces that you don't need to buy in order to fit this thing up underneath the bottom of an F100. So I'm going to try this, try to cut this bend so that it lines up with this straight section here. And then the idea would be that I could actually like turn it back, get that kind of like back look out of it. So that worked out good. It's going to give me about exactly what I wanted. Uh, so it'll just mat it to that joint there and it'll exit out the bottom and it'll kind of be hidden, you won't see any exhaust, it'll just kind of peek out and then hopefully uh, blow the sound back and you won't have any sort of resonation as it's not pointing straight down at the ground, it's not firing up underneath this bed or anything, making a big, uh, big old sound chamber. So I guess what I'll do is see if this fits on the other side. If it does fit on the other side, then I'll, uh, I'll copy it. So these rear two hangers, uh, I just took the hanger that I got off uh, Summit Racing and I just tackled a, a bolt up inside of each one so now it has a bolt to uh, actually bolt into the frame so these hangers can be removed from the truck they're not welded to the truck uh, there's a hole in the frame on this side I had to drill a hole in the frame on the driver's side this allows me to just put this hanger up in this hole and then take a nut and lock it in place So now I can just take that nut out if I never need to take the exhaust system off of here and the rear section will drop down and then I can unbolt it at these slip joints that I have here um, and just slide the thing out. So I'm just going to maybe bend this tab over some more that way I can tack weld it. Maybe it's fine. 
I'll just tack little this to this uh, this piece of pipe I have here. This will hang the that'll hang the back end. It should be ready to go. So here it is. It just tacked together. So I'm going to lay it on the floor and go around and finish weld all my joints now. But it actually came out from underneath the truck pretty easily. It all bolt unbolted from the headers and collectors real simply. It uh, the slip joints and the mufflers back there slid right out. The hangers that were unbolted came off real nice and easy. Uh, without this thing going over the back axle, it's a pretty simple system. The X pipe turned out good. It's got tons of clearance around it and it comes right in and out of there so it's good and serviceable. So all in all, pretty pleased with this one. Not bad for an afternoon's work. It took me roughly four and a half hours or so uh, for not knowing what I was doing and having not really done a whole lot of exhaust work before. I'd say this is definitely the way to go. Uh, I got exactly what I wanted. I got an X-pipe, I got the mufflers I wanted, I got the, the exhaust tips exit just how I wanted them to. Um, you don't see the exhaust like hanging out underneath the vehicle and all that sort of crazy stuff. So, so I'll post a link to all the part numbers that I used and things that I bought here and you guys can use the same things if you want to or find something different. Um, but all in all I definitely would recommend doing this versus paying an exhaust shop I don't know, anywhere from five to seven hundred dollars to build you a exhaust with an X-pipe in the thing. Okay, exhaust is bolted in place and ready to go. This is how it's going to sit. So you can see that exhaust tip comes out just in front of the rear tire there, uh, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Now you can see that even when you get to get down pretty low to the truck to see any sort of the exhaust underneath there at all, and you can see those mufflers a little bit. Uh, it's worked out great. It's what I wanted. Here it is underneath the truck. Looking from the back to the front. And it's funny now you can actually see how offset that drive shaft is back there. How it runs off to the side. But the X is nice and centered with the underside of the transmission. Plenty of clearance everywhere. Uh, it goes in and out. It uninstalls pretty easily. Looks like it should hang there really nicely. Nice and centered with the back of the transmission. It's got plenty of clearance over the rear cross member, all the headers, all the shift linkage. Everything looks like it'll uh, clear and be just fine. Things should ride really nicely. More quick shot from under the engine looking back. The headers and goes through that X and then the mufflers hang there and then they just turn on out the sides. So there it was, uh, put the exhaust on in an afternoon, um, hope you guys found this helpful. If you liked the video, uh, go ahead and give it a like down there and we're doing a lot more stuff with this truck so in the weeks to come going to redo the interior, I've got a Crown Vic swap planned for it, um, some other maybe an engine swap and a rear end swap and some other things. So if you guys uh, want to follow along go ahead and subscribe, I'm going to try to post a video like kind of every two weeks or so as I get parts in and then install them and then edit the video and get it posted up there so all right thanks for watching